Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today, I want to go back and talk a little bit more about this Gugon product that I showed you in the last video for cleaning truck. Uh, I did hear uh, some comments about this. One particular uh, person was really adamant that you really don't want to use this because of that sticky residue that I mentioned that is left behind when the solvent um, evaporates after you've cleaned the track. And you know, this stuff, you can see, there's a lot left in this bottle. I don't use this a lot. Uh, I only, you know, use this stuff for those times when I need to get that really nasty, grungy stuff off of the track or off of my wheels, something like that. It has to be a pretty serious situation before I'll get out the goo gone. Typically, I use the rubbing alcohol, either the 71%, or I was able to find this 91% uh, concentration at uh, CVS drugstore. So, I really recommend you consider using the isopropyl alcohol, either in cleaning cars or uh, on a rag or whatever you're using when you're doing your uh, when you're doing your track cleaning. It does a very good job. It evaporates. Uh, quite quickly from the rails, and it does not leave a residue behind. So consider using that. Uh, but like all organic solvents, if you're in an enclosed area, use a fan, get the windows open, whatever, but uh, don't get in there with that uh, alcohol fumes because it can make you high. Okay, so right now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. In the previous video, I talked a lot about different track cleaning cars and showed you a couple that I had. And uh, you can find those on Walther's or you can find them on eBay and various other uh, dealers, things of that nature. You can probably find them at train shows. You might even be able to find the Aztec ones that I showed you uh, on the secondhand market. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of places you can go to pick up, a, pick up one of these. But I'm going to show you how you can make your own. Now this particular one that I'm going to show you is uh, one that was attributed, the design was attributed to John Allen, and he apparently used it on his Gory and Defeated. And uh, I looked it up, and there have been a couple of articles in the press, hobby press, showing how to build this, but nothing uh, in the last 30 years. So I think it's about time to uh, show you guys how to do it. Basically, all it is is a, um, a piece of hardboard that uh, has a couple of nails attached to it, okay? And those are simply set to float in holes drilled in the bottom of a boxcar. So as the boxcar rolls around, it basically floats on top of the rails and it will polish the rail heads so you can have a number of these in your uh, rolling stock fleet uh, operating on your layout and they will be constantly rolling around cleaning the rails for you which is uh, fairly straightforward they don't work for the you know the really nasty grungy stuff but for that you can use you know your isopropyl isopropyl alcohol or whatever other cleaning fluid you decide you want to use uh, but once you get it clean then these guys will do a great job of picking up the dirt and, and other grease and stuff that, and prevent that dark grunge from actually forming. Now over time these will get uh, dirty themselves and then you can simply take a, uh, a piece of sandpaper and sand them down a little bit and they're renewed and they're good for another you know thousand miles. So over a 20 year period you might have to eventually replace the slider block, but you know, I doubt it. Okay, so how do you make one of these? Well, as I said, they're made from pieces of tempered hardboard. Uh, this is one inch across and about two inches, a little over two inches long. And uh, what I do is I use the rough side as the bottom and the smooth side as the top because you want that rough side running against the rails to clean them. And I take a piece of sandpaper, sanding block, or a rotary sander, uh, or whatever uh, mechanical sander you have access to, and just sand these to a nice bevel on each end. 
And that's what uh, part of the design that allows these to float up when they hit a turnout or a road crossing or, or any other kind of obstruction built into the track. So they float right over it. And because they're built in here free floating into the bottom, you know, they're not going to catch on anything. They just kind of move along. And they don't have a lot of friction. So, you know, they don't add a lot uh, to the effective weight of your train that you're pulling. So you can, you know, build 10 or 20 of these and put them in your trains. Okay, so as far as the nails, and nails are what I use to make these, okay? Um, it's an eight penny nail, two and a half inches long, but I cut them in half down to about one inch long, okay? So this is what it looks like after it's been cut. Um, very easy process if you have bolt cutters like these. If you don't have bolt cutters, you can use a cutoff disc and a Dremel tool or some other type of cutters that you might have access to. But in general, uh, it's not hard to uh, take a couple of eight penny nails and cut them off. Now you can, of course, change the dimensions of the block and the nails and uh, use these, make a, make a different design for N scale, S scale, O scale, whatever scale you're in, you can come up with a design that's going to work for you. So this is not necessarily limited to HO scale. So let's go ahead and make one. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is pop a, uh, pop the, the floor frame out from your boxcar. Now the boxcar that I use is one of these round roof Bowser boxcars, and I like them for one reason. The weights are split, one on each end, over top of the uh, wheels. And they don't have this area in the middle covered by a weight. And there's no weight on the bottom to get in the way. So it makes it easy to drill the mounting holes for the, uh, for the slider to fit in, okay? If you're using something like one of those, an Atherin car, or any other car that has a weight that goes the entire length of the bottom or the top, then it becomes a little bit more of a problem to get those holes drilled. Otherwise, with this, I can just take a standard, you know, a rechargeable electric drill. Uh, this is about a third, three thirty-second inch bit to go with this nail head or nail size, and I can just drill a hole that it's going to fit in. Okay. These are about an inch apart. And then you can just drop these guys into place. And they're just going to float there. Okay. Now, to glue them in place, I use uh, weld wood contact cement. Any type of cement like this would work. And basically, once I've got it in here, or once I have the nails in place, I just go ahead and paint the top of the head of these nails. And it's nice to have these big, fat, round heads on them because it makes gluing that much easier. You just hit that with some goo with some of the Weldwood contact cement, okay? And then, I want to put this over here before I knock it on the floor. I put the uh, pad on top and then slowly lower this into place and release the nails and then lift off. Okay. So that tells you exactly where you need to put more glue. So then I take it off like so, come back with my glue. You have to be careful. This weld wood brush, it's a big wide plastic thing and it really pulls up a lot of adhesive with it. But you can put more of this on, like so. And then they say to let it dry 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put it back together like this. Okay? And I'm going to drop everything back into place so that it's held nice and steady while it dries. Okay, 
So that, I'm just going to set that aside and we'll let that dry. So that's all there is to it. Um, I paint the sides of these black, as you can see. You can also paint the top black as well, and that will help hide it underneath of the car as it's in use. So go ahead, make up, you know, 10 or 20 of these and put them into your fleet and let them just roll around uh, cleaning the rails for you. It's a fairly easy thing to build and you can build a whole bunch of them uh, for practically nothing if you have uh, the parts on hand, if you have the cars. Nails are cheap at your local hardware store. Uh, you can pick up scrap hardboard sometimes at the hardware store. They'll give it to you if, uh, you know, if they think you're going to buy something else like some nails. Um, if they don't have any scrap, you can buy a small piece and cut that into these sections. So it's cheap, it's easy to build, and it works. Okay, It's got you know a 50 plus year history of use on people's layouts, and I can tell you it, it, it does a nice job. So uh, enjoy the project, uh, build a few cars, and keep coming back for more videos. But in the meantime, hit that subscribe button or when the icon of me comes up over here, click on it and it'll take you to a subscribe button as well. Also, check your notification levels. There are three different levels. You can select all videos, no videos, or custom. And if you select none, you won't get any notifications at all. If you select custom, you're going to get what YouTube thinks you want to get, not what you want to get. So you're better off hitting all.